In the previous video, we considered three possible implementations for the third layer. We mentioned that at least in some implementations, packets in the third layer carry addresses, specifically logical addresses. As I hope you remember, when we talked about the second layer, we talked about physical addresses, called MAC addresses. With the exception of special addresses, such as multicast addresses, these addresses are actually burnt on your network card and do not change throughout the device's life. When we talk about the third layer, we talk about logical addresses, addresses that may indeed change and are assigned to the devices rather than burnt on them. So a single device may have one logical address today and another one tomorrow. Why would we want logical addresses? Aren't physical addresses enough? Well, let's consider a world without logical addresses. Let's say that all endpoint devices on the internet were connected via switches. So we would have a lot of switches and the endpoint devices would be connected to them. Now, given the way in which switches operate, what would happen? As we've learned in video 3.7, a switch holds a table mapping MAC addresses to physical ports in order to forward the frames it receives to the correct port. If you want a message from computer A in Brazil to reach computer B in England, and we want every switch to forward the message only to one switch along the way, then all the switches will need to store as B address. If we want that to work for all devices in the world, then every switch would have to store a table with well, all MAC addresses in the world. That doesn't make much sense, does it? Furthermore, what happens when a switch doesn't know a specific address? Let's say that computer A sends a message now to computer C in China. Switch 5 has never received a message from C, so it doesn't know its address. It will thus have to forward this message to all of the switches connected to it. If these switches don't know where computer C resides either, the message will keep propagating through the network, leading to unnecessary load. This approach is clearly not optimal, and it really makes no sense. We are asking for a switch that is located somewhere in the world to forward a message given an address that is somewhat arbitrary. Logical addresses, on the other hand, are, well, logical. They can convey a meaning, specifically hierarchical meaning. To gain some intuition, let's forget about computer networks for a minute and consider mail instead, meaning snail mail. Assuming we want to send a letter from Brazil to someone in England, we'll specify the address in a structure such as this. The person in the post office in Brazil doesn't need to know where exactly Baker Street resides within London let it known where number 221B is. She can simply state that this letter is destined for Europe. So, let's imagine it is sent with an airplane to Spain, as this is the way it can travel to Europe, rather than, for example, to other parts of South America or to Central or North America. We assume that Brazil doesn't send mail via airplanes to every country in the world on a regular basis. Of course, we're not really claiming anything about the Brazilian post services here, it's just for the sake of this example. When the letter arrives in Spain, the post office can forward it northern in Europe. Again, the person at the post office doesn't have to know Baker Street or London. It's enough to understand that England is northern than Spain, and that it's best to get there, let's say, via France. When the letter arrives in France, the post office will probably send it directly to the southern shore of England, let's say with a ship. The post office in England will look at the address and forward the mail to the post office in London, which will in turn send a mailman directly to the right address. The cool thing about the process we've described is that it uses the fact that mail addresses provide a hierarchy so the post office in Brazil could only aim to send the letter to Europe, while the post office inside London could deliver the letter to its final destination. The same applies to logical addresses in computer networks. A logical address can also convey hierarchy. 
In the third layer, we use devices called routers that are aware of these logical addresses. So if computer A sends a message to computer B, router one can look at it and say something like, well, this address is in Europe, and I know that router two is the fitting one to send it to Europe. So router one doesn't have to know the specific address of B beforehand, but rather understand its general direction. Router two will then look at the destination address and understand that the general direction of the packet is this way and not that way. So router four will get the message. So the main reason for having logical addresses is that it improves the routing process. That is defining the path that the packet will travel in. Another important advantage of a logical address is that it may change. Consider again the case of mail addresses. Let's say that Sherlock Holmes lives at 221B Baker Street, London. So if you want to send him a letter, we'll send it to this address. Now, imagine that Mr. Holmes moves somewhere else, say for private drive, Little Wingling, Surrey, UK. It is still the same Sherlock Holmes, but if we want to send him a letter, we would have to use the new address now. The same applies to digital devices, of course. Let's say that I'm using my laptop in Germany. When I send and receive packets on the internet, my logical address is one that resides in Germany. I can get on a plane with my laptop and get to China and work from there. And then I will get a different logical address. My laptop's network card will still have the same physical address. It's just the logical one that changes. This is just like Sherlock Holmes has the same ID number, even though he changed his logical address, the mail address in our example. These two reasons are the major ones for having logical addresses. Yet, keep in mind that we still need physical addresses, as they guarantee that each host in our local network has a unique identifier. This is especially important when a new machine joins the network and doesn't have a logical address yet. In this stage, it already has a physical address, which can be used as its identifier, so this host can communicate without first receiving a logical address. In this video, I hope you were convinced that we need logical addresses in addition to physical addresses. At this point, many questions still remain unanswered. For example, what logical addresses are used on the internet? In addition, how do hosts receive these logical addresses? We'll answer these questions, as well as many others, in future videos, as we start to describe the most commonly used network layer protocol on the internet, IP, and specifically IPv4. As usual, feel free to leave comments or questions here, or on our Facebook page.